Please um, join me in giving a great big thank you to the incredible team of Susan Berger and Ken Outkalt for bringing this event together today. Ken sets the goal higher every year, and we every year match or, or succeed, over succeed. Well, usually at events like this, you're asked to turn off your cell phones. But today, I'm going to ask you to turn your cell phone on so you can participate in our interactive introduction to Reverend Moss's talk, The Teachers in Our Lives. In recognition of Teacher Appreciation Week, I'm going to tell you three short stories about students and teachers. And after each story, I'll ask you a question about you and a special teacher in your life. You can respond by texting a one-word answer, and all of your responses will appear on the screen. So to set up your phone, just refer to the ins Oh, it's right here. To set up your phone, do as follows. And I'll take a few seconds and let everybody set up their phones. The first story I'd like to share with you comes from the book Finding Fish by Antoine Fisher. It's the story of his terrible abuse and growing up in foster care right here in Cleveland and the effects that that traumatic event had on him and how he ultimately overcomes his demons. Um, there was a film made of the book called uh, The Antoine Fisher Story starring Denzel Washington that documents his struggles. Now, in the book, Fisher um, recalls Mrs. Brenda Prophet, his fourth grade teacher, as, quote, a teacher in the truest and best sense of the word. If there's such a thing as human beings who act as angels in our lives, Brenda Prophet was that for me. She was the closest thing to a mother I have ever known. He recalls an incident during a, a reading group. Now, Antoine was not a good reader, but when he was directed to read aloud, he carefully worked his way through the passage, um, using his limited skills and until he had completed the text. And in her low-key way, Mrs. Prophet acknowledged um, his perseverance and his determination to finish that task. And she told him that this is how one learns to become a good reader. And at that very moment, Antoine had an epiphany. For the first time, he had a sense of self-esteem. And Antoine said it was as if she gave him a gold coin that he could put in his pocket and carry with him wherever he went. For the first time, he felt competent. In one word, how did a favorite teacher make you feel? I'll start the second story. It also features a famous person, James Earl Jones, the actor and the voice of Darth Vader. Jones was born in rural Mississippi during the Depression, and his parents were unable to care for him. So at age five, he was sent to Michigan to live with his grandparents, who later adopted him. And the virtual abandonment by his parents and the sudden transition from the rural south to the urban north had a traumatic effect on Jones. And at the age of five, he became an elective mute, speaking only to himself and to his grandparents and experiencing a severe stutter. He was quiet and withdrawn throughout his entire uh, childhood until an event occurred in high school that changed his life. Mr. Donald Crouch, a literature teacher, remarked that Jones had a talent for writing poetry, and he asked him to recite one of his poems. Well, you can imagine Jones was horrified by that prospect, but he did bring himself with the teacher's encouragement to recite the poem, and to his surprise, he did it without a stutter. And the rest, as they say, is history. So because this teacher took a special interest in a troubled and withdrawn student, Jones gained insight into his potential and the self-confidence to actualize it. In one word, what did a special teacher help you discover within yourself? The last story has to do with a teacher counselor named Jim Price. One night a few years ago, he was awakened by a ringing phone at 3 o'clock in the morning. Hello, Mr. Price. It's me, John, from your class at the day treatment center about three years ago. Do you remember me? Oh, he did remember John. He was the rowdiest and most impulsive 16-year-old he'd ever met. Not only could John not sit still, he couldn't stop talking. He had no filters and he had a special talent for saying just the right thing to set the other kids off. But he and Mr. Price had a good relationship, and John learned enough self-control to eventually return to his regular high school. 
they kept in, ch in touch for a little while after that, but it was, had been about two years since uh, Mr. Price had heard from John. Yes, John, I remember you very well. Why are you calling me in the middle of the night? Because I'm about to lose it and beat the hell out of somebody and I need help before I screw up big time. Okay, tell me what's going on. Okay, so I'm in the army and I'm in Afghanistan and I work on this base and I'm with a bunch of guys who are supposed to clean up and check out the planes when they fly in. So somehow I must have ticked off my sergeant because now every time a plane comes in, I'm the first one he orders to the work detail. Every single time, I'm always ordered to get out there and I'm about to lose it. So after some dialogue exploring the situation and the potential consequences of beating up the sergeant, um, Mr. Price had a suggestion. John, you may not like this, but I think I have an idea that has a pretty good chance of getting this guy off your back. For the next two weeks, every single time a plane comes in, be the first one to volunteer for the detail. Don't wait to be ordered. Just volunteer and do the best job you can of cleaning and checking out the planes. And after a while, your sergeant will notice a change in your attitude and he'll back off. Can you give it a try? Well, John agreed and several weeks went by before Mr. Price received another 3 a.m. call. Of course, it was John, but this time he had good news. Not only had the sergeant backed off, John had earned a stripe. Mr. Price helped John find it within himself to develop a weakness into a strength. In one word, what strength did a teacher help develop in you? This is a room full of confident leaders. Well, everyone has a story about a teacher they admire, and it's no surprise that teachers have such powerful influence on our lives, considering the amount of time that we spend in school in our early years. So it's fitting that we take a moment to honor their dedication, creativity, and passion for the work. Now, here at, at PEP, we have people of many different backgrounds and disciplines working with our kids. In addition to teachers, we have art and music therapists, speech and language pathologists, counselors, and social workers, occupational therapists, and others. Yet, we refer to all of them as teacher counselors, a term coined by Nicholas Hobbs, the architect of our guiding philosophy known as re-education. The term teacher counselor suggests the very special blend of emotional intelligence and pedagogical acuity it takes to work with troubled and troubling children and youth. So this week, we thank and appreciate all the dedicated teacher counselors at PEP and in every school across the nation.